everybody. My name is Kelly Mara. I'm a children's eye brain in Michigan. I work in a small town of about 12,000 people, about an hour outside Detroit. Break out my little map here, right about there. I've been doing it about five years. I'm the only children's librarian at my library, so I get to do all our children's programming from babies up through about sixth grade. I love it because I get to see the kids as they grow and change and get older, which really gives a good perspective on child development. Also, I just get to keep the kids as they get older, which is, which is definitely a perk too. Lisa's asked me to speak with you on mixed-aged programming in libraries. So that's what I'm going to talk to you guys a little bit about. I'm going to give you a couple tips that I found helpful and hopefully they come in handy in your library programming. My first tip is to keep things as active as possible. I like to include active games such as relay races, duck duck goose, pin the tail on the donkey, tag, my kids love freeze tag, one of their absolute favorite things we do. It's important to include games like this because by the time kids get to after school programs, they've been sitting around all day in school. So they need to get moving if they're going to pay attention in the quieter parts of your programs. So I like to include these games as much as possible. I really feel they're valuable. They teach teamwork, working together in the games. They also are really good for kids that learn by moving and using their bodies, kinesthetic learners. So I like to include those as much as possible in my programs. These games can be modified to work with different age groups. Uh, you just gotta make things a little harder for the older kids. For instance, with Pin the Tail on the Donkey, I let the tot when I do it with my toddlers, they have their eyes open. They're, you know, close to the whatever picture we're using. You know, they just, they have fun with it. When I get to like sixth graders, I make them stand far away, turn around a bunch of times, Watch carefully if their eyes are closed. So we just ramp it up a little bit difficulty-wise for the older kids. So simple modifications are pretty easy to do to make games work for different age groups. These games can also be modified to suit different themes. For instance, I've done pin the rocket ship on the planet for a space party. I've done pin the poop on Greg Halfley's shoe for a Diary of a Wimpy Kid party. So you just have to get creative to get what you what the game you want to use to suit the theme you want to do. And my next tip is to come up with as many games as possible for your programs. As many activities and games as you can. The more you have, the easier it is to fill your allotted time period and the easier it is to modify what you're doing based on your age group. Especially if you don't know what age group is going to show up predominantly for a program. You know, even with an age range, it can vary greatly. So if you have a wide variety of options to choose from in your planning, it makes it a lot easier to pick and choose what you think would work better with a particular age group. My final tip is that crafts and food are always a big hit with all age groups. Kids love when they get a snack. I do try to be careful with allergies, nothing with nuts. I also try to include a couple options. So if kids are allergic to one option, they can choose something else. Okay, But that definitely is a big way to draw kids in, are the snacks and the crafts. They definitely make your programming fun, which is what you want. Leads into my final tip is to make your programming as fun as possible. When kids are having a good time at the library, they're going to grow up to be library lovers and supporters. That's a big part of our mission as children's librarians is to get kids to love the library. If they have memories of playing freeze tag at the library as a kid, when they're an adult and have kids of their own, they're going to bring their kids to the library. They're going to use the library and support the library, which is definitely what we all want. Um, that, those are about all the tips I have for now. If you have any questions,
feel free to get in touch with me. I'm on Twitter as at Miss Kelly Tweets. My blog is Miss Kelly at the Library And uh, just thank you for including me in the class. Definitely, if you have any questions, feel free and get in touch with me. Thank you so much.